Hi, this is Kyle Sears from Zoll Medical. Today's Zoll X Series Tips and Tricks video is going to focus on capnography. It's a request that many of you had sent in asking to make sure that we cover capnography on the X Series so that your crews are not only understanding why they're using capnography, but the value of it in cardiac arrest situations and also respiratory distress calls as well. So we'll focus on those two specific patient subsets in the video today. I'm not a paramedic. I'm not very well educated, as you can tell by my empty bookshelves. But I do feel like we've developed a pretty easy way to understand capnography and the value of it in treating those types of patients. So let's get to it. All right, so the first thing we want to review is just the general functionality of capnography on the Zoll X series. So whether you're using an inline adapter for your cardiac arrest and vent patients, or you have the oral nasal cannula for your respiratory distress patients. Both of those disposable pieces will have this orange plug-in, which gets plugged into the left-hand side of the device. Now, in order for the waveform to pull up the fastest way possible, you want to follow these steps. So the third button down on the left-hand side labeled CO2 when I press that button, the machine beeps at me, a yellow light flashes up here, and you hear the pump start up for a second. What the machine has now just realized is that there's not a disposable piece plugged in, and the message up here, filter line not connected, reminds me to go ahead and plug that disposable piece in. So you want to take the end of this, there's a door in the left-hand pocket that moves up and down. So the easiest way is to take just the tip of this adapter, move that door down, and turn it clockwise until you feel it stop. Now that's a threaded connection. So depending on where you stick that in, it'll turn about halfway or three quarters of the way and you'll feel it stop. And immediately then you'll hear the pump start up. And I'll show you the waveform that's produced the millimeters of mercury value, and the respiratory rate. All right, so now we understand the functionality of how to use capnography on the X-Series. Let's talk about how to sort of maximize its performance during a cardiac arrest call. So the easiest way to think about capnography on a cardiac arrest patient is it's going to be measuring a couple different things, right? So it's going to dictate whether or not that patient has properly been intubated or has a proper advanced airway established. And that's going to be confirmed by whether or not you see a waveform on the screen. So if you're ventilating the patient and you don't see a waveform appear, that's your indication that you have not properly intubated that patient. The other values that present themselves are on the right-hand side here. That's gonna be your millimeters of mercury level, which is measuring the pressure of the CO2 leaving the chest cavity. And also it's gonna be your respiratory rate right underneath there. So if you think about on a, a dead patient, a cardiac arrest patient, there is no cellular metabolism. So what would normally be an exchange of oxygen going in, carbon dioxide leaving the body, that doesn't exist. So that number right there where it says zero is gonna be really low. And typically that number is gonna be determined by how long the patient's been down and the quality of your CPR compressions. You'll use that as your first indication of return of spontaneous circulation. So when you get ROSC back on that patient, and all of a sudden you're putting oxygen in, there's cellular metabolism going on in that patient's body because they're alive now, you're gonna have a pressure or a reading of the millimeters of mercury of CO2 leaving that chest cavity. You want that number to be between 35 and 45, and that's gonna be your indication that you get ROSC back on that patient. So when all of these things are working together on the X-Series, a cardiac arrest patient is gonna present normal rhythm, 
underlying rhythm or C through CPR, your capnography waveform, and then your millimeters of mercury and your respiratory rate on the right hand side. So I'm going to do some CPR here and show you what this looks like. You can see I'm not very good at doing CPR with my foot, but you'll notice all the information that's on the screen now is all of the different indicators that I should be paying attention to during a cardiac arrest are managed on the screen in one spot. If this gets any sort of blockage or occlusion in it, you're going to hear this sound. The machine will say purging. So normally what capnography is doing on the X-Series is sucking in the CO2 that's being exhaled or pushed out of the chest cavity. In this case, it can't suck that in because there's an occlusion. So instead of pulling air into the device, it reverses the airflow and tries to push it out and you'll get a purging message. If for some reason it cannot do that, the filter line is occluded at that point, you'll need to replace it with a new one. All right, so the next thing we're gonna take a look at is gonna be the use of capnography on respiratory distress and sepsis patients. In that case, you're gonna be using this disposable piece, this oral nasal cannula. The disposables that have supplemental oxygen will include this green tube set, which can be plugged into your oxygen port. When providing oxygen in that way, rather than just driving it into the patient's nostril, it's going to push the oxygen through these little pinholes. That develops a cloud of oxygen around their mouth and nose, which clinically speaking is a more effective way of delivering oxygen to that patient because if they're breathing heavy out of their nose or mouth, you're going to provide oxygen to them either way. The way this disposable piece is set up allows again for a heavy mouth breather or nose breather to have the values recorded either way. So what we talked about was on a cardiac arrest patient, whether or not you saw a waveform on the screen, right? That dictated whether or not you had properly intubated that patient. In this case, on a respiratory distress or sepsis call, you're gonna see all different shapes of waveforms on the screen. And the shape of that waveform is gonna determine what's causing the distress on the patient. So an asthmatic patient, for example, is going to present a shark fin shaped waveform. Your goal, just like it would be for a, a cardiac arrest call, would be nice, flat, plateaued waveforms on the screen, showing a proper respiratory cycle. If I see that shark fin shaped waveform, I can say to myself, hey, that's an asthmatic patient. I know what to do to treat an asthmatic patient and then see how they react to that treatment accordingly. The process is exactly the same. So you hit the CO2 button. Plug in your disposable piece. I'll take a couple breaths here, you can see. So those nice flat plateaued waveforms are what we're shooting for. Now, the other subset that's started to become very popular in a lot of the protocols as they're getting rewritten is the use of capnography in monitoring sepsis patients. So the same way that you call a cardiac alert or a stroke alert, the idea of calling a sepsis alert is going to give the receiving hospital an opportunity to get prepared and get antibiotics ordered for the particular patient that you're bringing in that you're suspecting uh, is suffering from sepsis. So, you know, obviously based on your local protocols, it's gonna help you dictate whether or not you call that sepsis alert, but for the most part, what you're looking for is an elevated heart rate, whether or not the patient has a low or high temperature, and then also the end tidal value. So whether or not their 
blowing off CO2 in an appropriate fashion. That seems to be becoming more and more popular throughout uh, the area that I cover especially. Last thing we're going to talk about is using cabinography for sepsis management. Sepsis is you know, a hot topic right now. A lot of the uh, protocol revisions that are coming out include a formal sepsis protocol with the idea that you'd have the ability to call a sepsis alert to the hospital the same way you would a stroke or a STEMI alert. That's going to allow the receiving facility to be prepared for when that patient comes in, whether that means ordering antibiotics, having a special room prepared for them. So the same idea applies here. You're going to use your oral nasal cannula. And based on what protocol you're following, you're going to ask yourself, is this patient hot or are they cold? Because they can be warm or cold septic. What's their heart rate? What's their respiratory rate? And what's their end tidal CO2 value? So all of those will play into you making a decision as a clinician on whether or not you need to call a sepsis alert. So hopefully that gives you guys a better idea on how to use capnography on the X-Series, what types of patients it's important to use capnography on. And uh, just let me know if you have any additional questions. You can leave comments below uh, or email me, call me, whatever's easiest. And we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.